What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new Satisfactory episode. Last week we dropped the first part of this series and you guys blew my mind with the love, support and beautiful comments you was leaving. And even on the tips and tricks video that kind of blew my mind as well. It was... Yeah, it was, it was nuts. But this week is a new week and... Well, we've got a lot more stuff to do. But last week we managed to get iron plates being made iron rods, copper wire, cable, and concrete. This week, we need to step up the game a little bit. We've got some more milestones we need to do, and we've got assemblers to get unlocked. We've got Mark II belts, and we've also got to fix this issue of our storage actually getting blocked up. So it's time to earn some coupons. But First, before I get on with them coupons, I want to unlock the field research because I want the MAM, which can provide us with new materials if we start putting stuff in there and getting our research and stuff. But we need screws. So first job of the day, set up a screw line. Okay, so to start off, I'm just looking at this section now. We've got one section here making rods at 60 per minute and one here making 60 per minute. Obviously, it's on hold right now because the storage bin is full. Um, but if we're making 60 per minute and we have a look at our screw recipe, uh, it requires 10 per minute. So that's going to need six constructors. So what I'm thinking about doing is if we come around here, uh, head up onto the next floor, grab myself a foundation and we're going to build a little second floor, which will probably expand later on. But I just don't know. We're just kind of winging it right now. Um... And I'm also going to flip these mergers and we're going to get ourselves a nice little lift going up here as well. So I'm, I need these to be flipped. So let's remove these lines. So we're going to put that into there. We've just flipped these all the way around. I didn't flip you though, did I? I flipped you the wrong way. So let me just go bam, bam, bam. Like that. And because these rods are going to be used at 100% efficiency, we're actually going to leave that storage bin there just for me to collect for personal use, just for t just for the time being. Um, let's remove this strip here and then grab ourselves a lift. And, oh, that's coming through a little bit. So let's just pull you along and then bring you up. And I think that's right. I think, I think. Oh, I just one up above. Let me just build that out. It just kind of snapped at a 45 degree angle. Build you. Bam. Now I'm going to need six constructors along here. So we're going to need one, two, and the reason I'm kind of placing them like this because there is a bug right now. It'll probably get fixed soon. Um, but if we if we grab this and if you hold control at a side of a building like this, what you'll notice is if you look at just above where it says build menu at the bottom, you can see that the, this hologram that is green is actually raised a tiny little bit. All right. So you look at the construction on the left hitbox. And if you look at the one on the right, it's actually raised by like a centimeter. And that can actually cause belt issues um, if you have any splitters. So you'll notice it kind of comes down on a slant now. You see this? So if you ever have a merger or, or, or a splitter, just like this at the side, you won't allow be allowed to uh, place it because it would be too short. Because sometimes I place a splitter like this to create things nice and compact in some of my later builds. But if you look at this... It won't allow me to place it now because of that little one centimeter lift. So what I need to do is for now, you will see me placing them just like this without holding control. Because now if I put that splitter back, or oh, sorry, the, the merger back, it would technically allow me to build. See, just like that. So if you are holding control right now and you're wondering why that's not working is because of that reason. So, uh, just hold on, which if you notice, I think we are going to be using it on this build. We are. So if I was to put a uh, a splitter on here and line you up, uh, are you are you are you good? Are you? I think you're good, right? Yeah, you're connected. 
And you're the wrong way. Lol. So now we put this around. And then we should have our six instructors. And these are going to be sending out at 40 per minute. And as we know, we've only got Mark 1 belts right now. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Okay, so now I've set up all the screw machines. But I'm not going to set up any storages. Because every constructor right now is outputting 40 screws per minute. And our Mark 1 belts are only holding 60. So there's no point in me putting 60 belts. Because all I really need the screws for is for the actual hub itself. It just saves me handcrafting from rods. Um, I just want to get these up. And I can start seeing the design then on where I want to go. Because I could have easily handcrafted the screws just for the hub. But as you know, I like to make sure I'm automating everything just so then it starts future-proofing me um, for more, you know, when I start setting all my automation up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let these build the screws uh, and, well, pull some of these out now, actually, because we should be able to send off our milestone. So we're going to head back to the hub, and I think we can send it off. We can indeed. So let's send off Ava and let's unlock field research. So be gone, my beautiful. Go, go, go. Okay, so now we've unlocked the mam. We've also unlocked a storage container. So we can place some of these around. And yeah, which is pretty sweet. But basically, these are the, the same ones as these ones here, but... We actually don't need all of these, so let's remove them. But what I want is something we cannot see just yet, but not too far away. The unknown metal is there. So let's go and get it because we needs it. We needs it. And here it is. Protected by two wild hogs. Oh, we're being seen. We're busted. Ah. No. Bad hog. I'll take you, actually, for some research. Where's the other one? Okay, so here it is. Caterium. We need this so we can then start creating AI limiters. This resulting in us making smart splitters, which I kind of prefer to use when it comes down to sinks. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of this by hand real quick. So I've got some in my inventory. I think I need 10, I believe. And now, if I go into my... Mam, I should now see Caterium. Now, if I just put that into there, it's going to take three seconds. This is then going to unlock the Caterium tree. So now we can start doing some Caterium ingots, but now we need 50 Caterium ore. So, back to mining. We will, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. I saw someone put this in the comment section, and uh, yeah, I do it all the goddamn time. Ever since, like, update one. If you didn't already, it's now going to be stuck in your head. <laughs> but there we go. We got 46, 48, 50. Boom. Ethereum done. Start research. Three seconds done. Next, we now need Caterium ingots. So we need to set up a basic line here. So what we're going to do is we... Uh, I'm going to bring the grid over here, haven't I? Oh! A thing's been implemented in the new patch. We now have a world grid. Wait, wait. We have, we have a world grid now. Oh, exciting times. For those that don't know what this is, okay, so as you know, we always place foundations um, down um, like this, right? But if we was to build a factory here, and for me to connect this factory to this one to be on the same grid, we have to bring a foundation from all the way over there to over here, right? But now, now we're at the beginning of the game. This is the perfect time to use it. But unfortunately, it's not going to attach to that grid. So if you get a foundation now and then hold control, right? You hold control. It's, you see how it snaps to a grid now? The world has now been implemented. Thank you, Lim. If you, you know, I think you'll post a comment. 
Right? Lim, you better post a comment. You lovely human being. But if you now hold control, you can see we can, we, we have a world grid, which is something we have been wanting for ages. Because this now, if we was to build a building or, or, or for example, a, a factory on this grid, right? Uh, let me just zoop this over here like so. <clears throat> we can build a factory here, right? But let's say, okay, the sulfur that's at the bottom of this hill, I wanted to be on this same grid. What you would normally do is grab the foundation, take this all the way over there, and then build that foundation all the way down there so it snaps together. But now we can hold control. We can place this here. You can see it snap into the grid. We're going to set this to vertical. We're going to bring this up. And this should now, technically, it better work. Please work. It should snap to this grid. The only difference is it has this issue. But that can be fixed via ramps. Okay? But as you can see now, everything will keep nice and tidy if you hold control once you place a foundation down. So now if you've built a foundation way over there at a new factory, just hold control. And this will be the same as that one over there. So no goddamn building of foundations like that all the way to your next factory where you want to build. Simple. I've got hiccups. <laughs> I've got hiccups. The reason I'm going to put this on a world grid, because this is something we're going to use in the future. The starter base, however, is something that probably we want. This is probably going to get removed in the future because I want to extract all of them ores that's over there to the mega base later on which we're going to make loads of room. So that over there is a starter base. This is probably the grid we're going to go on. We're going to play with the world grid. So that means if we're playing with the world grid, you will have the same world grid as well. So if you think about it, me and you can actually build exactly the same. You know what I'm saying? If you are playing along, you know, <laughs> but anyway, let's get this down. So I am going to need a equipment workshop. We're going to quickly make a portable miner. Get that built. Then we're going to place a Mark 1 miner. Just place this down. Uh, where do we have this? Let's have this just over the cliff, yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to reduce this. We're going to set up a smelter. And we're just going to connect you there and bring you in. Wait, no, I have splitters now. Remove. Wait, how much do you need? I can't remember. Ethereum, you need 45 per minute. Okay. So I do need a Mark II belt. So we are going to be sending more ore than we need to into this smelter because this is only going to smelt 45. So then we're going to have a constructor here. You're doing, you're sending 15 per minute. And for a Ethereum ore, we don't have that set yet. So let me bring this here, you here. And then let's take this back to. The base. Make sure I don't fall or I die on the way down. Like I do all the time in the live streams. Place that one there and then connect you up to there. And I think we're out of power. Are we out of power? I'm guessing we're out of power. We are. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, someone mentioned in the comments on the last video that these aren't actually worth using compared to these ones because they would actually run out of fuel uh, a bit more. I think that's what the comment says. That's to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But just to show, these actually have a 33% um, uh, longer lifetime than what these do. Okay. Reason being is because these send out 20 megawatts per minute. This one sends out 30 megawatts per minute. And this one should technically have around 60. Oh, yeah. Well, 66 biomass left in the, 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 the burner, right? Because obviously this is sending out more. This is sending out more fuel. This one's sending out less fuel. So as you can see that this has still got 66 less fuel. So um, this one actually doesn't burn uh, fuel quicker than these. Uh, technically, they, they, they burn it less because this has got uh, an additional 33% uh, you know, life lifespan. Uh, with these done because obviously these are going to burn it quicker because they're sending out more megawatts through your base these ones will always near enough have this amount left if you were to run these and these at the same time with full 200 uh in so just to clear that up as well um there might be some instances instances where they will be they'll kind of uh you know not balance out but just to just to respond to that and also 
a lot of you have been asking, what is the location for this area that we're in? So, let me jump over to my live stream save, and I'll show you, because I don't have a map on this one. So let me just jump over to that save, and I'll show you. Okay, so I've just opened the map on the, uh, on the other save, and if you look down here, this is the grasslands. This is where everyone normally starts, and it's your first option. Up here is your desert. Then here's the rocky desert where you would uh, you you can start as well. And then here is the northern forest right here. But we're actually slap bang right in this location. Because if you remember, this is our concrete facility here. The copper we're pulling is from here. And then the iron is actually spread across these two sections here. So this is where our starting location is. Right there. Okay, so hopefully I've got enough biome. I don't think I've got enough. Oh god, I can't I can't wait to uh I can't wait to get to coal. Let me put some of these in here. Turn that on. Get back up and running. How much do I need for obstacle clearing? I just need a couple of screws. Hmm. Yoink. Obstacle clearing. Select place. You in there. You in there. Boom. Chainsaw acquired. And poof, the trees have gone. <laughs> okay, so I've made a little quick semi-automated uh, thing here for the biomass. So when I put I put leaves in this one, I put wood in this one. The wood then turns into the, uh, the biomass. And then on this side, the leaves turn into the biomass. And then in here, this is where biomass turns into a solid biofuel. But it's only a temporary setup. It doesn't have to be efficient. And it saves me, you know, I like handcrafting the solid biofuel. So I can just leave that running now. I can go and chop trees and woods and all that kind of stuff. And then just store it into the right bin. And then I can just walk away instead of, you know, handcrafting all the fuel. Now, time to get back to the Caterium. Okay, so now we should have some ingots in here. We do... Sweet. And I'm just going to quickly make a mam again. And then... Ethereum. And now I can unlock Quickwire. And then what do I need for you? Ooh. Let's get that research in. So that gives me an extra uh, inventory... Well, six slots. Um, but then... I need to make 100 Ethereum wire. So... Let's connect this up now. Let's get you making quick wire and then connect you up to a power pole. And then this is, let's just have like a temporary, like a makeshift storage here. And add a storage onto the U and then connect you up. So then we just need 100 Caterium wire. So that's that set up. And we can just kind of leave this now and let it do its thing. Because we don't really need the Caterium wire as of yet, until I get, like, Mark II power poles, or we start, like, focusing 100% on, like, automating our AI limiters and stuff. But, yeah, that's that kind of done. But if we wanted to, we could technically unlock the zip line as well, which is kind of fun. I kind of enjoy it, and it's pretty decent. If you want to, like, especially in the Northern Forest, like, where we are, there's, like, a big cliff, right? So if we need to get the, to the bottom, we can just put a power pole down there, and connect it up with a wire, or like from here to down there, and we can just grapple along. It saves us like running around. So maybe we do that. Maybe. But our research is complete. And do you mean I can't afford it? Oh, I don't wait. Oh, it's because I did the the thingy one, right? I did the inventory slots. Let's grab you now because we've got two hundred and twenty-three in there. Let's put our in there three seconds bada bing bada bosh boom and there's our ai limiters but we need copper sheet wait are we not making co we're not making copper sheets are we damn damn and i need frames for them hmm hmm this is just tempting to handcraft right now so tempting to handcraft but I can't handcraft with... Uh, uh, I don't want to break my rule. I don't want to break my rule. 
no, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not breaking my rule. But I'm going to unlock port assembly where we will unlock copy sheets and modular frames. I am sticking to my rule of no handcrafting. I apologize, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Select. Let's store all of you in here. Setting that off. Now we've unlocked the assembler. See, this is the weird thing, right? <laughs> what have I just been saying about handcrafting? God damn it. But do you not find it weird how to build an assembler, you need rotors? But to make rotors, you need to <laughs> you need to build an assembler. Why why is that? Why do we have to use rotors to make an assembler but for us to automate rotors we need an assembler so technically i have to break my rule or we go and find a a, a hard drive location and just quickly find like a stack but i'm not doing that i'm making four specifically just to make one just to make one okay so now we can do our list stuff in the assemblies. We can make reinforced plates, which we need screws and iron plates. We also need modular frames. We can do that stuff. My mum's just completed. What did I make? What did I research? Wait. Wait. I researched. <gasps> I researched. So you may be asking why you're going up the zip line bits. Why are you going up here? Well, let me just show you what happened. Oh, shit. God, well, I was going to try and show you how to use a zip line. <laughs> God damn it. And that's the reason I never usually use... <laughs> The goddamn zip line. Like, look at this, for example. This 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 sign we have created in, in, in the live stream playthrough. Just look at it. Just look at it. Zero days since last incident. So basically, I if I if I survive a live stream, I will put this up to one. Right? I've had this sign for near enough two weeks. Near enough two weeks. And it still says zero. I've managed to get this to say one. But once I'm able to unlock signs, we're going to put it into this playthrough. So yeah, as soon as we unlock signs, I'm going to put one here. And I promise, I promise, I swear, if I die in this playthrough, I will change it, okay? But I need to decide, so leave me a comment on how would you want me to do this. Do I do it, because I'm going to be releasing these videos every Sunday. Do we class as Monday to Sunday as seven days? Because I do work on these videos, like, throughout the week. Or... Do we do it for every Sunday? So if I was to die in an episode on a Sunday, does that class... As, uh, will that class as one day surviving? Or do we go from Monday to Sunday? So leave a comment below what you would want me to do. And then I'll tally it all up and see what you guys decide. And then we'll go with that. But now it's time to start working on some complex... Well, not complex, but... More advanced iron. I won't say complex, because that's going to be later on. But um, what we need to start looking at now is start looking at the assemblers. So, for anyone who doesn't know what assembler is, it's, an, it's basically a constructor, but this time you're merging two items for it to create one item, all right? So now we're going to be start making, like, grabbing our plates, putting it into the assembler with screws to make reinforced plates, right? But we think we're going to start off with rotors. As we know, it does need 100 screws per minute, which we cannot get right now because we need reinforced iron plates, all right? So we're going to start off with rotors first off because we've got this platform up here and we're just going to throw in one belt line. Yes, it is going to be a not efficient line just yet, but it will be pretty soon, okay? Then we're going to do a reinforced plates line and then a frame line the reinforced plates is going to be i believe it's 30 per 60 oh yeah i've just been looking at it 30 iron plates per 60 
for 60 screws, which is fine. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab one line because, as we know, that one's making 40. That one's making 40. What I might do is I might get 60 and get two going up because we are going to need reinforced plates for the smart plating. So we need two per minute on that one. And for each one that we are making, it's going to be five per minute. So let's get this one underway and we are going to use these rods here i cannot get the smart splitter yet because i need ai limiters uh, and for me to get ai limiters i need copy sheets which we will work on pretty soon so let's get this down i need to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to bring you up maybe i build my assemblers above the plates over here oh wait i'm on default oh let me zoop y'all want zoom tomato zoop Okay, so what, I, what I've quickly just done, I've just removed the storage from the plates. And I'm going to grab a splitter right here. Because we need to make 60 on this line, right? So this is making 40. These two are making 40. 40 down this line, 40 down this line. I'm then going to get this to go into a splitter. Then we're going to get another merger. And we're going to put it onto this line. So 20 is going to come through here. And then we're going to get a storage bin, place it here, and then you're going into there. Okay, so does that make sense? So these are coming down here. I could just easily just put like you come down the center line here and go straight into this line. But I'm just going to keep it neat and tidy just for when I expand soon and get more two belts because I will be doubling this. So I've just kind of like load balance this kind of little section here. So yeah, we've got the 20 coming out. It's being split again. And then this then can merge with this line. So then that'll be a 60 belt. And then I need to send you upstairs, which I'm going to send via a lift, which is going to be on this side. So I need to extend. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, my. Uh, it's because I've just grabbed all the plates. Damn. I'll just remove them. Some people are like, why did you not just sink the plates? Because I'm kind of not in the rush for coupons, I suppose. I think I'm not, but maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I, I definitely need them for, like, update 5 stuff, for sure. But I need a way to get upstairs. So let me just... Let me just cre create a ramp around here. Let's do that. Let's just... Let's just add you there. Um, And now, I just want to bring out a belt from here real quick. And then just grab a lift and take you upstairs. Then we have our line coming up. So we have you coming up here. <gasps> That's why have I just done this? Why did I just do that? Why, why, why? Why, why did I just do that? Do I want to die? It's because I thought I had the jetpack. God damn it, that was close. I'm so glad I landed that, though. Right, so now... That's my plates coming up. I need a line of screws. So what the best option here, what I'm looking at, is this one line coming down. Um, and I believe, is it, is it one... One, um, uh, one assembly with 60 screws, right? I believe, right? Reinforced plates. 60 screws, yeah. So we're going to put two of these down. Uh, we're just going to push these back just so that it's kind of nice on the foundation. Oh, I can only pause, put one down, can I? Damn, because I need more rotors. Ah, I just handcrafted some rotors, okay? I handcrafted some rotors because I'm making rotors, All right? I'm going to be setting up my rotors anyway, but I'm handcrafting my rotors. Ignore me. And there we have it. Reinforced iron plates. So let me take you through the setup. So what I've done over here at the screws, as you know, each constructor makes 40. So what I've done on the middle one, I have put a splitter coming out. So 20 go this way and then 20 go that way. That then joins up with the 40, creating a 60 line. And then this one creating a 60 line. So now we have two 60s because as we know, if you go to an assembler, a reinforced plate line requires 60 screws per minute. And before, before uh, when I was downstairs setting up the plates, we created a 60 line. And that's just coming up here via a lift from downstairs. 
being split via the splitters up on a higher shelf and then coming down via a lift into the assembly. So we've got 30 plates going into there, 30 plates going into there from a 60 line and then two 60 lines making a 100% 100, 100 efficient reinforced iron plate. So 100% uh, efficiency, 100% efficiency, making us 10 reinforced plates per minute. Next, we need to do rods. So, not rods, um, rotors, right? So, downstairs, we're... God damn it. <clears throat> the goddamn dreaded power sound. Wait, do I have enough fuel? Please tell me I have fuel. Please tell me I have fuel. Oof, I have just enough fuel. How much do I have over here? Okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Okay, so before I go and make the rotors... We're about to unlock Logistics Mark II. Now we are automating reinforced plates, which will allow us, because uh, rotors need 100 screws per minute. And doing this allows us to create one rotor machine. So let's get Mark II belts. Okay, so now we've just unlocked the awesome sink. We've also unlocked the awesome shop, which I can't technically place. We've unlocked the... Um, Mark II belts now, which is a faster belt, which if you look in here, it does send out 120 resources per minute. So everything now can be doubled. And because it sends out 120, that does mean our miners can now run at 100% efficiency because we have the capacity on the belts, which does mean all of our production needs to be doubled. But we're being stopped from doing that. The reason being, biomass. We do not have enough power. That's the reason we are making these rotors, then we're going to make some frames, and then smart plating. That meaning we can unlock tier 3 and 4 and start working on coal power. So, let's crack on and let's get our rotors done. Because now we can officially send 100 screws to one assembler. Okay, so I did that, but I did a little more. So what I've done is I've automated rotors and also frames. Okay, so let me show you how I set all of this up. So first, let's start with the rods. So as you know, we have 60 rods coming down here. But what we need is we need 20 for the rotors and we need 12 for the frames. Just to double check, we need 20 for the, the rotors and we need 12 for the frames. So... What I've done down here is a bit of a kind of a like a load balance, uh, kind of semi load balance. So everything is coming down here is 60, which means 60 is now going into here being split three times. So 20 is going that way, 20 is going that way, and 20 is going that way. So 20 is going into my god damn it every time. God damn it, moth. But I suppose it's quiet now, right? It's peaceful. But now we've got 20 going into this storage. We have 20 coming back round into this merger. 20 going into this merger and 40 going up. So that does mean that this line is receiving 8 more than it should do. Which is fine for now until we get smart splitters. Next, we're going to look at the screws. So the screws, it's pretty simple as well. So as you know, each constructor of screws is giving us 40. So 40, 40 and 40. So 40 is coming into this merger, 40 is coming into this merger, and here we have a splitter. So we have 40 coming out, 20 going into the storage, and 20 going into that merger, equaling 100 on this line, because rotors do need 100 screws per minute. Next up is our reinforced plates. I've shifted the merger across to this one, just so I can line this up, and now this is making 5 per minute, five per minute going into this buffer which is going to capture all of the reinforced uh, iron plates and then send them out when needed so if this does back up which it will because this only requires a three per minute where an excess of seven is being stored into here so that gives us our frames and so now we have frames rotors and reinforced iron plates being made as well as Caterium over there, and screws, and all the good stuff. So this video has actually been quite a lengthy one. 
but hopefully you can now understand and maybe just clean up your base a little bit this is not clean for me to be honest like i would do something so much different but i'm kind of keeping it very basic for you guys to start off where you would be as a new player or possibly someone who has some experience but wants to start up their base a little cleaner because me personally i would have already had reinforced plates already by now and i would have made sure everything was a mark two but i want to keep it simplified just for you guys to understand a little bit more easier and then you can start working out how you would like to improve and quicker well make your start quicker so what we're going to do is we're actually going to call this episode right here so thank you so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you please remember to leave a comment in this uh, comment section below also like the video if you've enjoyed it and also subscribe if you already haven't and guys i very do appreciate it for all the love and the support that i've received over these last couple of videos it is it, it does mean a lot so anyway keep smiling and as always See you next time.